Downey High School is located in southeast Los Angeles. We're a very large school. Currently we have 4,400 students. We have a large EL population. Uh, our free and reduced lunch population is near 75%. Um, so we, we are a large uh, urban suburban high school. When the kids graduate, what can they say about Downey High School? And it puzzled a lot of people. And you could see it in their face, they were confused, like, what is it? I thought it was just that they graduate. Is there supposed to be more to it? <laughs> what, what is it that, that defines somebody that graduates from Downey High School? And, and I think it was poignant that they actually stopped and, and considered it. And that's, that's, that was the hook. It got them engaged. And where do we go from there? We had a professional development day where we wanted to um, pull everybody and get everybody's thoughts involved. So we talked about that, you know, Common Core and No Child, Child Left Behind and all these different directions. What was happening was we were spread so thin that we really were losing focus. We wanted to make sure that everybody understood why it was that we had to choose one focus. Um, so that first uh, professional development day in 2014, before school actually started, we started talking about this. And we, one thing, one thing, one thing, and one thing only. And so what we did was, after we explained the rationale, what the ILT was, and how we were opening it up to everybody to come to our twice uh, monthly meetings at lunch, because we didn't want to be an exclusive club. We wanted everyone's voice to be heard. We were finding that most people either seem to want critical thinking or writing and it was really hard when we were trying to decide which one we were thinking okay well how would we then prove this or what would our evidence be of someone knowing that they are thinking critically how do we prove that and that was really difficult we could how do you how do you prove critical thinking critical thinking is an easy thing to say that you want kids to do but how do you measure critical thinking so we're trying to measure it through the writing process each class, period two, wrote what they thought our Zippy slogan should be, incorporating critical thinking through writing, and we made a poster and we put it on each of our classroom doors. And this way, again, being very visible, everyone walking around the campus can see students, staff, administrators, teachers. The agency is a group of talented people that what we have formed is more of a family bond than just other people. What we do is we turn ideas into creative artworks. For our teachers, we designed the Think With Ink logo, which is for our school-wide focus of thinking um, through writing. Um, so we made a logo to represent that idea. So with this logo, we're making posters and folders and uh, t-shirts. All the teachers are going to have a polo or a t-shirt with the logo on it that says Think With Ink, Downey High School and um, all the students, we've created a couple of student t-shirt designs that will have like a big ink bladder, ink splot on the back that says Think With Ink or a little one in the front that says Think With Ink just to kind of give you that idea that sometimes thoughts are messy but you can take it and you can make it into something beautiful. So in order to um, have our focus and implement it into the classroom, we wanted to come up with one good teaching practice and to get students to be able to think with ink via this one um, best practice. And our group had decided on justification as our best practice. Lo and behold, I need to learn how to justify my thoughts and provide evidence to support it here too. And they do that in each one of their classes. So now the students feel like there's something connecting. There's no longer a disconnect. There's not this, this subject and now I have to bounce to this subject. It's that there's this thread that connects knowledge. My science teacher said it, along with my English teacher and my math teacher. Something's going on here, so this must be an important idea. And the second thing is they're going to sign it, try to see, uh, or they're going to start to see the connection between, between, you know, the disciplines. They have a desire, and they know that there's room for improvement. With a little bit of hard work, a school's going to look better. My advice for a principal that would be taking on the, uh, the focus and the instructional leadership team approach would be uh, a little bit of patience to start with. Um, I'm kind of the person that wants to uh, get things done and sometimes in a hurry. So it, it is a process. We've been at it a few years now and uh, I think um, slow and steady to start with is, is, is okay, especially with a staff as large as we have. 
as long as it's it's steady. And uh, I feel that we are really starting to gain momentum right now. The way that they have pulled together, the way their teacher leadership has pulled together, the way they brought the large staff into the process has been very, very impressive. And they've done it through effective communication.